Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Math Bell. My name is Michelle, and here I share strategies, tutorials, tips, ideas, and more on elementary math for parents and teachers. Today is day eight of our 30 day back to school math resource challenge. And I'm so excited in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you how to create a math tool, a math tool that we know as number lines. Now, a lot of times we need to use number lines with our students for different standards. And most teachers have a standard number line up on the wall in their classroom, or if hopefully you've shown your students how to create an open number line. But in some instances, you wanna give students more practice at their desk with number lines involving different problems, such as in third grade, students need to be able to identify fractions on a number line. In the primary grades, when students are adding or subtracting, one of the main strategies is to use a number line to show their thinking. And number lines can be utilized in other areas such as estimating and rounding. Let's get started. We're going to create our very own number lines so that you can use them with your students or your children and help them to do a variety of things in math, adding, subtracting, multiplying. We're gonna look at how you can help them round using a number line and then even looking at um, identifying fractions on a number line. So let's get started. I'm gonna open up a new presentation, go to design, Go to sides, slide size, page setup. You want eight and a half inches for the width and 11 for the height. Then we're going to select the page and delete those default text boxes. So what we're going to do, we're gonna go up to shape. Now I have shapes as a shortcut in my um, toolbar. So if you don't have that, just go to insert and then go over to shapes and we're going to select the double-sided arrow or double-sided line. And then we're going to make our arrow or our number line, stretch it out. And then we're gonna come up to the line under shape format and make it the color you want and the thickness that you want. And there we have our first number line. I'm actually gonna leave this one like it is because you can have students using an open number line where they write in the actual numbers that they wanna use to solve whatever problem that they're doing, whether it's adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. So let's do another one. So I duplicated that open number line. And for this one, we are going to add in tick marks or dashes. So I'm gonna come up back to my shape shortcut and select just a regular line without the arrows and I'm going to make a tick mark and then I'm going to do the same thing change the color change the thickness let's make it a little thicker and then I'm going to make it a little shorter I don't want it to be too long and if you want to check exactly how it's laying on that line just zoom in and I like how that looks. Well, let's bring it in to represent our zero. And then we're gonna have it going up to, well, for our students in kindergarten, let's do one up to five. So that's the zero. So this will be one, two, three, four, five. Now to get it evenly distributed across the number line, I'm just gonna move this one down here to, that's gonna represent the five. I'm going to select all of the tick marks and then come up here to shape format, go to arrange, go to align. I want to make sure they're all leveled in the middle and then I'm going to go back to arrange a line and then distribute horizontally and then they're evenly distributed. So I'm going to do the same thing for zero to 10, so I'm gonna duplicate all of that and bring this down. And then I'm just gonna select those tick marks again and then hit duplicate. And then just kind of put them in the middle. I'm gonna bring this one over on the end back here. 
And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the arrange. Select all of them, go to shape format, arrange, align, make sure they're all in the middle, arrange, align, and then distribute horizontally. So now we can add in our numbers. So you can leave it like that or add in numbers. So I'm gonna add a text box, put that here. Use the font that you like and the size that you like. So this is gonna be zero. I'm gonna place that there. Let's bring it in just a little. And then I'm gonna duplicate that and bring it here. I'm gonna hit duplicate, duplicate all the way over. And then you can make sure it's all even by going back through the arrange and alignment. And then you just wanna change your numbers. So then we're gonna do the same thing for the numbers below. I'm just gonna take the zero and duplicate that. And then duplicate it like I did with the earlier ones and then going across and then going through and changing those numbers. And there you go. So we have our three number lines. Let's do one more. Let's do one up to 20. Okay, so those are all set. So with this resource, I'm not necessarily making a page for students. I wanted to show you how to make your own number line. So I would definitely save these as a picture. So we're gonna select each number line and save them as a picture and save. And then make sure we're gonna group these first and then save as a picture. So zero to five number line. So to group them, I'm selecting all of them and then hitting right click, right clicking it, then hitting group and then group again. Or on your keyboard, you can hit command option G to group. So save as picture. This is zero to 10 number line. And then this one here, group, right click, save as picture, zero to 20 number line. So just so you know what it is later on, these number lines can be used to count on, count back using a number line. All right, so let's do a second page. So now we're going to look at how we can use the number lines for rounding. So let's keep, we're gonna get rid of these two and this is the bottom one. And we're gonna use one that goes within 10. So we can use that to round so that they know when you're starting rounding, going between zero and 10, rounding to the nearest 10. So let's duplicate that. And then we're gonna switch out these numbers. So let's make this a 10. I'm going to ungroup it. Group, ungroup. And then I'm gonna select 
the text boxes in between my tens. So that's going to be 10 and then I'm going to change this to a 20. So students can figure out like where to place their number and how to round to the nearest 10 if it's between if it's between 10 and 20. We can do the same thing for a larger number. So like what if we did 100 and this was 200. We can do that and you can do one where you give the students the midpoint because some students struggle with figuring out the midpoint. If you give them the midpoint to round or if their task maybe, let's see if it's a higher number, let's say 470 and this would be 400. 80 so then instead of giving them the midpoint you can put a question mark and see if they can figure out what that midpoint is what is the middle point between 470 and 480 so the there are four different types of number lines to use to help students with rounding using a number line and let's these group them and then save them as a picture and save so we have all of those as pictures okay so let's do another one let's move this down and let's duplicate this page and then this last one is going to be fractions on a number line. So what we're going to do, we're going to get rid of these and we're actually going to go back to that first page we made and copy that open number line and leave that there. And then we're going to duplicate that and we're going to add in a text box. To represent the zero and the one let's make it bold and centered and then we're gonna have a space for the one like one hole all right and then we need to bring in our tick mark so we can recreate that tick mark or we can just pull from one of the ones that we already made so copy and then paste Let's paste two times and then we're going to put those as our endpoints and we're going to change this to a one. So now what if we wanted this number line but we wanted to show the half mark so I duplicated that and then I'm going to grab one of these tick marks and duplicate and then bring it in the middle, grab the wrong thing. Bring that in the middle and then we can distribute horizontally. Okay, perfect. You can leave that blank so students need to figure out that that's the halfway mark. Let's duplicate this. Take the tick mark and duplicate it twice. Put one here one there don't worry about getting it perfectly in the middle because we have that alignment button align distribute horizontally and then we have our fourths and then we're going to do this one more time i could do eighths but let's look at what thirds would look like so we are going to take these lines and actually let's take one out and we distribute and there we have our third so I'm gonna move these up let's go ahead and group these move it up so with your fractions on your number line 
one task students can work on is just figuring out, okay, based on how the number line is partitioned, what, what's the denominator? What fraction size pieces are represented here? So there are three equal pieces of the whole, so that means there are thirds. You can also um, extend what they're working on by adding an arrow or a dot. So we're going to add a circle just like that. If I hold down the shift button, it'll make that circle equal all around. So then if I put the dot here, let's make it black with no line. And then maybe put an arrow, go back to my shapes to get this arrow here. Put that there and then change the color. So then the students would ha have to identify the point on the number line. So what is that point? What fraction does represents that point? Something else they can do or you can do is insert when you're doing a text box, you can do Go to insert and add in those fractions. So go to insert equation and then, or hit the equation button and then hit the fraction button, hit the one you want and bring that down here. Then you can put one third and then over here you can just draw like a question mark piece so students have to figure out what is the missing fraction? So there are some more examples of what you can do with fractions on a number line. So let's group these. And this one will show similar. Save as picture. Save. So we have all of those saved as a picture. Of course, you can print these out. Um, so let's look at how we can insert those pictures that we created into a new blank page. So if I just go to insert and then picture and then picture from file. So I have all of these images that I've created and then because I created them here, they have a transparent background. So if I wanted to give my, if I wanted to create a worksheet with many open number lines, I could do that. Or I can just use one. Um, let's grab the zero to 10 um, number line. Let's grab our rounding 100 to 200. So you can put add that to any page that you want. You can make little flashcards with it, homework pieces with it. Here we have three different ways that we can use number lines with different math concepts. And I hope this tutorial helped you with showing you how to create your very own number lines to create math resources for your students to work on or your children at home to practice with. Okay, day eight is complete. Now you know how to create your very own number lines. There's so many that you can create. You can have students use them as a tool or you can add them to different pages to create problems for your students to solve. If you want access to the ones that were created in today's tutorial, please check out the link in the description box below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. If you wanna be notified as soon as the next video is posted, please hit that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.